Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. Uh, I'm going to continue reading our reading, and thanks to my subscribers who are listening to this. Thank you for your tolerance for me to being sporadic. I found my favorite glasses. I'm going to stick them on over these. This, is, this makes the reading just exactly right. So I don't know how that works, but it does. I want to read the last chat, the last paragraph. Remember this? Five days ago, six days ago, the last time I read, Hefner asked him, all over the controversy, the controversy, Goffman, yes. I don't have any quarrel with atomic power other than I don't believe it's consistent with health. I don't have a hidden agenda, except I have an agenda about health. It matters. I think that was worth reading again. Skepticism about the value of formal arms control agreements. Gorley. Now, your belief is that it's important to have nuclear weapons, but they have a purpose and its deterrence is important. Goffman, yes. Gorley. Is testing important for maintaining the stockpile? Goffman. That's debated. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with testing under the ground. Wow. It's not just that it's not it's just not that big of a danger or of hurting anything. Wow. I think the people who are making a big to do about it, we must stop. We must get a comprehensive test ban. Let me say something about comprehensive test bans. I do not believe in treaties. People of good will don't need treaties, and people of ill will never abide by treaties. So they just, they just don't need to have them. We don't have a treaty with Canada aside from NAFTA, but we don't have a real treaty. We won't bomb each other. Secondly, anybody who thinks you can fight a nuclear war and win is insane from the word go. If a nuclear war is fought, then deterrence has failed. I think this. It's a dangerous world, and there are people of ill will out there. All the people of ill will did not disappear in World War II. I think that any society that has any basis of decency and humanity had just better stay on the technological edge or they're going to be overrun by the thugs, tyrants, and murderers of this world. I don't want to see that happen. Oh dear, that's a negative projection. No wonder we're screwed, you guys. Okay, let's continue with his negative thought patterns. <laughs> They're not our thought patterns. Let's turn those into positive ones, okay? <laughs> I don't want to see the United States go down. So what he's really saying is he wants to see the United States go up, right? It's a lot of goddamn difficulties, such as the people who would engineer that little fiasco at Wichita, setting Frank, Frank Fabricant, Fabricant, I, I'm, I had trouble with his name before too. Jacob Fabricant, up with that. Blah, what a word twister. He must have been used to saying that guy's name. Setting Jake Fabricant up like that. Worried the hell out of me that the Justice Department participated in that. But still and all, if you can think of any other place in the world that even comes close to the freedoms that we do have, I'd like to see this place better and not go down the tubes. Oh, I'd like to see this place get better and not go down the tubes. I think there's a danger. I consider the people who are too avid in the disarmament movement are going to kill us. What? I, th I consider the people who are too avid in the disarmament movement are going to kill us. Gorley. Do you think that some of your critics, the folks who say, oh, Goffman, with this radiation, no safe level, do you think they would be shocked to hear you say, let me see, say what? 
Well, interesting to read into his little brain, eh? To hear you say that the dangers from a few underground nuclear tests are worth it? I don't know. They might. Gorley. I think that would be the sort of thing that would silence a lot of your critics. Goffman. My view would be I'd say all those things publicly, and I think the case I would make is not to the not that the underground tests are not harmful. They are harmful. A little will leak out. A small number of people will get hurt. I would want to tell the American people if I were king, I'm leveling with you. This is something we need to do to persevere the freedom, to preserve the freedoms that we have. Wow, this is what he'd say. I would want to tell the American people if I were king. I'm leveling with you. This is something we need to do to preserve the freedoms we have. Don't you agree that we need to do this? And what if we said no? Like, heck no, it's not worth it preserve the freedoms we have screw that by killing things like this forever hundreds of thousands of years without answers to the waste you guys are dense but i wouldn't be running a movie out in downwind st Wait, what's he saying but i wouldn't be running a movie out in downwind st george utah i wouldn't be running a movie okay but I wouldn't be running a movie out in Downwood, St. George, Utah, saying, go out and come here and see the cloud, no harm and all that. I think that's where the big mistake was. Oh, they must have done that. The arrogance of the DOE and the Atomic Energy Commission. We know best. We don't have to tell you. We'll hide it and we'll lie to you. That's kind of exactly the same. That's all I object to. With respect to the safe dose which they're trying to sell, I consider that a war against humanity. They're conducting a war against humanity and somebody's got to fight them. I don't have any objection. I don't like the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. You know Helen Caldecott? Huh, that's the first time I've ever heard her refer to her. I'm going to highlight exactly what he said. That's a really important... This whole thing forget the thing about leveling with you disagree with you on this but this a hundred percent okay the arrogance of the doe and the atomic energy commission we know best we don't have to tell you we'll hide it and we'll lie to you that's what i object to me too john goffman me too with respect to the safe dose, which they're trying to sell, which they ha are, it's the only option, not trying to sell, that's the only option. I consider that a war against humanity. Me too, brother, me too, it is a war against humanity. They're conducting a war against humanity and somebody's got to fight them. I don't have an objection. I don't like the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. You know Helen Caldecott? She must have been involved in that. Hefner and Gorley both at the same time? Yes. Goffman. Helen Caldecott's very famous worldwide. She's an anti-bomb activist. She was saying, we have to have a treaty to ban the cruise missile because pretty soon we won't be able to detect them all. If you won't be able to detect them all, what the hell is the sense of a treaty? <laughs> I don't understand the disarmament movement, but they don't like me, the disarmament movement. Okay. Motivation during the Manhattan Project. Gourley. In your life, you've accepted a level of risk as far as radiation is concerned. Goffman. I was pretty happy to do that. I would do it again because in my lifetime, you know, you don't know about it, Caroline. I would do anything that would help defeat Hitler and the Japanese warlords. I'd be happy to take a lot of radiation or whatever it took. 
You could come into our lab in Gilman in 1942 to 44 at midnight or 2 in the morning. The chances were better than even you'd find us all there. We didn't have to be there. That was just how we felt about things. I'd have people from NHK TV, that big Japanese TV. They have several different branches, Tokyo NHK, Hiroshima NHK. We were on both of them. I remember the last one. They said, don't you feel badly that you've worked on the bomb? Thinking of all the horrendous things that you did in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? I said, well, you know, it shouldn't have happened. I think you should have thought about it when you bombed Pearl Harbor. If we hadn't had Pearl Harbor, we wouldn't have had the Philippine Death March, and we wouldn't have had the Guadalcanal, and we wouldn't have had Iwo Jima, and we wouldn't have firebombed Tokyo and Hiroshima. It would not have been bombed. You should have thought of that before you bombed Pearl Harbor. Uh-huh. That's the justification. Okay. That's what war is about, man. Wow. He could have said, yes, I feel bad. And then said that. But maybe he felt that way. Anyways. Okay, new subtitle. I'm going to keep reading till 15 minutes. Ethics in Human Radiation Experiments. Okay, here we go. Let's hear their interpretation of ethics, folks. Ethics in Human Radiation Experiments. Gourley presents a document. This is from the Joint Committee because we were talking about Dr. Batzel. It's a letter that you wrote commenting on some of the things that were being said. The criticism of you was that the AEC staff said that your interpretations were not based on experimental work of your own. Goffman. That's when I told him, look, you want me to go out and bomb my own Hiroshima? Gorley, exactly. Goffman. Can you imagine somebody saying a field like the health, health effects of radiation where it all depends on what's happening out there, it should be your work? Gourley, yes. After you said, go bomb your Hiroshima, you said, go and irradiate children, infants in utero, and TB patients. Now, in light of some of the things that came out about the radioactive oatmeal given to the kids and all this other stuff going on, Goffman, Yes, I consider the things like the injections of plutonium immoral. You'll get a copy of the videotape. I don't have an extra copy. I can show it to you today if you want to see it. I'll see that you get a copy of the thing that I did on 60 Minutes Australia. It was a very, very deep personal significance. It was a matter of very deep, deep personal significance. The 18 people who got the plutonium were chosen because they were believed not to have a long life expectancy. I have for a long time as a physician known that the dumbest thing that a doctor can do is to decide the life expectancy of someone else. The Eileen Wilson story shows you that some of those people lived 25 years. It was a personal experience. It was a personal experience, which is what I, which is on that tape, and I'll show it to you briefly. Helen, my wife, was an intern in pediatrics at the time. This young boy was brought over from an Austra from Australia to become one of the 18. Any child that was brought into the UC hospital had to go through the pediatrics admission service. Helen worked this child up in, on his admission physical. She didn't remember it, but they showed it to me and some of the documents that came out from Hazel's DOE, DOE's Secretary O'Leary Hazel, that's who Hazel is, office. I was working with the 60 Minutes Australia group. 
Oh, how far do we have to go? We have to go quite a ways. Uh, I think I'm going to stop because it's a long paragraph about this big long story and we're already at 15 minutes. So I'll read again. Even if it's late tomorrow night, I will read again. We're, we're super close, like five or six pages left. So put your courage feet on and uh, shocking material, I know. Take care.